The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar. I'm joined by Gordon Flower and he is Head of On-Demand Testing with SQS Ireland. And today he's going to be presenting a webinar on leveraging the cloud for on-demand test services. And <clears throat> if you have any questions for Gordon, you can do you can type your questions for him in the discussion over on Test Huddle, and I'll be sharing this link to the discussion with you now very shortly. And this discussion will take place directly after the webinar, so we'll head across then. But for now, I'm going to hand you over to today's presenter, Gordon. Hello, Gordon. Hi, Dara. Thanks for that. I'll uh, just get the screen up here. Uh, welcome everyone today. Um, what I'm going to talk about, as Dar said, is leveraging the cloud for on-demand test services. And I'm going to cover uh, several different things within this, both um, tools and resources and how we use the cloud to, um, to affect the, the best use of them. Uh, I'll cover some of the challenges that are facing testing in general um, that can be addressed by the use of cloud. So it's not all challenges in testing, otherwise uh, you could probably run a whole seminar on that in itself. Um, so I'll really focus on the tools and the people and people. Uh, I'll go a bit more into detail what I would consider to be on-demand testing. Uh, there's various different definitions out there. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about how we would uh, use and refer to on-demand. And one of the key things to that is a, a pay-per-use model, uh, both for tools and for costing. And I'll go into a bit more detail in how we actually use the cloud itself, which tools we use, how we use them, how we leverage the cloud, uh, the likes of software as a service, uh, some of the cloud providers, uh, Amazon Azure, Rackspace, um, uh, specifically, not specifically any one of those in particular, as there's plenty of providers out there and we're quite agnostic as to who we, who we use as a cloud provider. Uh, so it'll be more on how we use it as, as opposed to who we use. And I'll talk through one of a sort of typical uh, test engagements around the cloud itself and how to engage in using cloud services. Um, I'll, I'll refer mainly to sort of uh, performance and automation and regression services, but I'll talk also about if, how the cloud can be used for a different type and range of uh, test services. So, ready to go into what are the challenges for testing uh, that are relevant to uh, and can be addressed by the cloud. One of, the, one of the big challenges is license costs. Um, and when you're looking with performance uh, test tools, automation test tools, uh, test management test tools, there can be a large investment in the licenses uh, because you need to buy the license for a defined period. Typically, uh, you know, maybe you can you can do a one month, three month, one year uh, rental on licenses that need to be renewed uh, yearly. Um, so the licensing model um, can be very expensive. Um, performance testing is one of the areas where uh, I'll refer to a lot throughout the, um, the webinar. It's, it's, it's one of the areas that's really pushing uh, use of the cloud. That's one of the early adopters of using the cloud. And performance testing and license historically have can been very expensive. Um, but that's been changing over the last while. So instead of buying um, licenses for a defined period of, uh, say, one month or three months, there's now both the existing uh, tool providers are moving to an on-demand uh, pay-per-use model, as well as there's new companies out there um, doing uh, pay-per-use. And those licenses and the tools now are provisioned in the cloud. Um, I'll come on to a bit more with pay-per-use uh, in a minute, but one of the challenges is that, that initial investment in, in tool licensing. 
So in the traditional route, um, once you've even bought your licenses, it takes time, uh, it takes experienced people to install the tools, set up the infrastructure the tools set on, and configure the tool to run uh, the way you need it to run for your testing to go ahead. So all that needs to be done up front. Um, that all takes time and it takes an experienced um, engineer to come in and set up the tools. So it costs a bit of money and that's no real benefit to actually the output of testing. It's an overhead that you get no direct return from. One of the other challenges is uh, infrastructure. If you've got to set up a new tool in a normal uh, on-site environment, you need to provision new servers, either physical or virtual. There's usually a lead time on that, particularly a long lead time if you need to set up uh, physical servers. Um, and there's also the running costs as well of actually the, the servers on the infrastructure, the licenses for any operating systems on that. Um, so if you're putting the infrastructure in, you need to find somewhere to put it or the client needs to find somewhere to put it uh, and it costs and there's a running cost associated with that year on year as you use it. Um, so we'll address some of these challenges as we go through. The other challenge is around people uh, and this is more where we come on demand. So it's getting people with the right testing experience to test the application. There's a lot of uh, different applications there so it's having experience uh, in testing uh, testing resources can be quite hard to find when they've got the good experience. Um, and it picks you through peaks and troughs. So traditionally, um, you're not constantly testing at the same rate throughout uh, the year. There's obviously, there's times when releases come out, there's more pressure on, there's a demand for testing at that particular point. Once that release is gone, that demand diminishes doesn't necessarily go away, but it will diminish, so there's always peaks and troughs. Um, and what we're trying to do with uh, On Demand is to help manage peaks and troughs, to augment existing test teams, as well as um, to do all the testing as well. And therefore, there's no troughs, so if you're not using someone, you're not paying for them because it's an on-demand service. Um, the next thing is office space. I mean, we're uh, SQS or consultants, and quite often we're going to client sites where there is, you know, as as companies are growing rapidly, they're running out of space and, and desk space connections to, onto the network, um, and that can be just it's just a physical space within the office. So with the on demand, it's something we can do using the cloud. We can access systems through the cloud and remotely. So we don't need to be physically in the office to do the testing. Another area we can, with on demand, that very advantageous is the specialist skills, the likes of security testing, uh, test automation, uh, DevOps, performance testing. They're all very specialist skills that, for a small medium enterprise, they don't need those people constantly available um, throughout the year. There's someone that needs to come in as and when required, and it would be a big overhead to maintain those people within a company. So on demand is able to bring those specialist skills in only when they're required. Uh, and so what what is on demand testing? So on-demand testing, it's a service model um, and what that means is it's, one of the things is it's not you don't get a specific person. It's a service model that you can turn on and off. When you need testing, you can turn the service on and you'll get the testing service you require. So you may need a performance testing done, so you bring a performance tester in when you need the performance testing done. And one of the advantages of that is with traditional, you can augment um, possibly the likes of specialist skills with contractors. Um, and the way that can be done is you need to know that what their start date is, what, how long the duration is going to be. So you need them 
set up, you need your licenses in to start at a specific date and time. And it's quite often, often happens in performance test engagements. And test engagements in general is there's delays with the product delivery. And actually, the life cycle, the um, testing gets pushed back and shifted to the right. So you need to delay the testing. So you effectively will have a resource sitting there, licenses sitting there that you can't use. With the on-demand service, well, the way we will work that, the way we work that, is that if you know that you're going that your project's slipping and you need to delay, you can then say well, we don't need you to start in first of November. Actually, we need you to start at the end of November. That's easily done within the service management of the on-demand testing. Um, so you're not getting a specific person because from a service point of view, we can't say, yes, uh, John Smith will be available 1st November or any time in the near future that you need him after that. We just say you will have a resource that's appropriate experienced and able to do that task when you need them. Now, obviously, there is uh, a lead time within the, within the service. so. It's not as if you can ring up at a 2 o'clock on a Friday and say we need someone 3 o'clock Friday. We need to engage uh, and specify when you need them at a bit of lead time. But even though you're not getting a specific person, there has to be, and there is a specific engagement management between the client and, and and the test and ourselves in SQS, and the on demand is managed within a longer term engagement. It's not just a, a one off, although it can be. The other thing about on demand testing is it generally uh, it's conducted off site, so we're not coming into site. So that relays the need for office space uh, within the client site as well. Um, we run that from service centres, so we have a lot of the people. We are working together on the different projects, all working together, and we've got a good base and knowledge within that area. And it's also with on demand; it tends to be short-term engagements, um, tend to be that augmentation where you've got a, a real push or you've got a need for a specialist skill like performance testing or security testing. It isn't a long-term engagement. Um, although, as I say, it can work within a larger framework. So moving on then to the pay per use model, and this is really where, because um, the proprietors of uh, various tools are changing how they're licensing their tools and pushing their tools into the cloud, we can use we can now use those. So the likes of um, if you go to performance testing, there's so the cloud test um, who charge as you use. They charge by the hour, so as you wrap your tests up, um, it's based on the load server hour. So you can test an amount of users for a fixed cost for an hour. Um, and if you want to run that test for two hours, that just doubles that. If you run it for three hours, it's triple that. When you finish testing, you finish paying for that service. Um, and it's a very effective service. And other tool vendors and more existing ones like uh, HP are moving into that, into that area with Pronk. Um, and Borlander there with Cloudburst, and there's a lot of newer companies as well looking to to do that cost model because it's very effective. And what you do is it's all accessed through web browsers, so you don't need to install a lot of application software. Uh, although you, for the recording side, uh, you do with that um, performance testing tools. Um, and what that does. It means that we can use interfaces into Amazon, Azure, whoever. To spin up the instances of the performance test tools as and when need be, and we charge as and when need be. So the tool and the licensing then is as you need it. The resource that comes with that, with the experience to do a performance testing, is also provided on that same service. So as you need to test, you pay for the tester as you need them, and you just schedule in the next test uh, and schedule in and pay for when they're actually testing. So, for instance, in performance testing, where you do a test cycle, you find issues, and you need to go away and figure out what is the root cause of that uh, performance issue. Um, normally, you'd be paying for the tool to sit there, 
you'd be paying for performance testers to sit there really just waiting for the next cycle to happen, which may be maybe a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days, uh, it may be a couple of weeks before we actually get to the root cause. Um, and you're effectively paying for that person to sit there doing nothing. With the on-demand, what we can do is we can schedule we can schedule a test for one day. So we'll run this test, uh, we'll find out results, we'll schedule the test for the next day. But if there's major issues found, we can we can push that test back to a later date, maybe the next week, to give more time for issues to be resolved. And in that inter intermediate intermediate period, you're not paying for the tool or the or the test resource. That's that's really what pay per use is about. And the other thing we're doing with pay per use is it's it's based on the amount of testing to be done, which is really uh, rather than so it's the effort to test rather than the duration of testing. So inst so we can base our cost models on, uh, for instance, the code base size if we're doing a code review, um, the number of requirements if we're doing functional testing, um, for performance testing, maximum concurrent load, number of business services, and we can do this for a, a defined price uh, based on some uh, requirements and some dependencies. We can do the, the testing for a defined price as required. So just to summarize that, we've got the traditional model, which is on site. It's done on a, st you have a start date, and, and you're, you're testing for a duration, a defined duration. Um, while you're waiting for environments, while you're waiting for fixes, you're paying for the resource and the tools that aren't being used, um, and you'll have a fixed person assigned to that task. So on the other hand, the on-demand model, it's generally off-site, although there's no reason why we can't go on-site. Um, you have a start date and you have an effort. And that effort may be spread over a much longer period than the actual duration of testing, with the times in between the test cycles not being charged for. So you're only paying for when you're actively being engaged. Again, we pay use it as a service. Uh, so your service is providing, you're not getting a particular person, you're getting a level of skill and you're getting the tools based on, on requirements. So the types of services that we can supply using the cloud, leveraging the cloud, uh, is shown this. So it's about eight different services uh, from likes of code review, uh, security testing, test automation, uh, functional testing, etc. And the way we use tools depends on the service itself. Uh, but what we're trying to move towards is hosting all these tools in the cloud. Uh, and we'll come on to some of the issues with that of hosting uh, services in the cloud in a minute. So there's various types of tools uh, available at the minute uh, on the cloud. As I've already mentioned, the likes of um, Social to Cloud Test, uh, which would be considered much more software as a service, again with HP Prong software as a service, uh, where there's, it's all pre-configured, they've got good interfaces, um, if, where you can go in, use these third-party interfaces to very quickly, very easily set up the tool you need uh, the application you need, the configuration and the infrastructure is all handled very nicely so you don't need to go into the actual infrastructure itself and go into Amazon itself to set these things up. And they're very useful, they're very quick, it allows you to, in a matter of minutes, uh, provision a test environment uh, for performance testing, for uh, continuous integration, uh, for source control. So, it's very simple and straightforward. You're obviously paying again a bit on the on the uh, for the third party, uh, but that's mitigated by the amount of time that you would spend yourself doing it. Um, within the various cloud suppliers, like Amazon, AWS, and, and Azure, there's templates out there uh, as well. So there's templated. Um, servers 
the likes of if you want to provision um, a test tool such as uh, Jenkins, you can go in and there's a pre-configured Jenkins tool there. There's also um, tools in there for security testing, um, Kali Linux, so if you need that just to spin up rather than install it yourself anywhere, you can spin it up and use it as you need it. Um, that requires just a bit more knowledge and it's not as straightforward as using the, um, the third party software as a service solutions. Um, but it, it's a very efficient way of using the cloud. Uh, you're able to manage it directly uh, and spin it up directly and see what your usage is directly. And again with these tools with the templates, you're only paying for them once they're spun up in general. There can be costs as well when you have templates that are just being held in storage, but the costs are very low, certainly compared to uh, normal traditional infrastructure. You can also use cloud tools. You can use from uh, the cloud providers. You can just um, provision a basic operating system uh, and then install the tools that you require yourself on the on it, uh, and then manage and use the uh, cloud in that way. One way we'd use that is, for instance, for automation testing. Uh, with the likes of my my current laptop, I do a lot of um, demos of different applications and I'm always looking at different types of applications to see what's available and, and the best use and see what's new. Um, so I'm always constantly installing and uninstalling stuff. I've got I don't know how many different versions of, of JVM on my machine, uh, of .NET framework and applications. And therefore, if I'm to go and test an application, um, there's lots of dependencies that I would need to install on my particular uh, machine. Uh, which may clash with each other. Um, and what we can do with provisioning OSs directly is that we can create one, one source of truth. So we can create an operating system, take Windows, we can install, uh, for instance, if we we're going to do automation testing with Selenium uh, and using uh, Eclipse with that, we can install Eclipse on that, Selenium, the various plugins we would use with that and we can create a template itself of that image. So we know that every time we use that image, we've got a complete uh, instance of everything configured. There's going to be no, um, no conflicts with anything else running on that machine. So what we can do is we can very quickly then, spend, as people, additional testers come onto the service, we can very quickly uh, provision a new uh, machine for them to use for testing. Typically what you'd have to do is get your laptop, download the software you need, install it. There's usually problems in the installation. Uh, it takes a couple of days then to get everything configured before you're actually productive and testing. So using the cloud, uh, once you've got your template, it really is a matter of minutes to spin up a new instance of that template uh, and, and give that to a new tester. So they're productive so much quicker. So yes, there is the additional cost of the, the cloud servers, but at the end of the day, when they're not using that, they can, they can uh, tear down that server um, and then carry, and then it's not being charged for. Next day when you come in, you, you switch on the server and then you start using it and you start charged at that point as well. And that brings down the whole cost of testing. So as I said, how does cloud enable on demand? Cost is the big thing. It really does. You don't need the pay per use as well means you don't need upfront investment. You don't need upfront investment in licenses. You don't need upfront investment in infrastructure. You don't need time to configure initially. So you pay as you go along. The more you need it, the more you pay it, but you're paying directly for what you use, not setting it up. So cost really does come down as you start to use cloud tools and use the cloud to enable your testing. Accessibility and security, it's always a dual-edged sword. The great thing about the cloud, putting test environments up in the cloud, putting test tools up in the cloud, is it makes accessibility to the system under test very easy, or can be made very easy. Um, as we go into, app, particularly if the applications themselves are 
uh, web facing applications uh, that are designed to be forward facing. Also, the internal applications, there can be issues with accessing those. Uh, and that's one of the things that can take a bit of time with them. Um, with the cloud environment, using cloud environments is that when you've got servers outside testing internal servers, obviously there's uh, we need to get through firewalls and the security systems within the within the client uh, to make sure we've got access. And that can take a bit of time setting up, uh, but there's we can create things of virtual private clouds uh, to help secure the, uh, ensure the security. You can whitelist the IPs that the that we're coming from or we're testing from, so only those uh, IP addresses get access to the application. So there's lots of things that can be done to make sure that we've got like, access to the application under test in a secure manner. One of the other concerns around uh, accessing uh, the system under test from the cloud that we find is, is the security, it is in regards to data and the uh, security of data on the system. And really, the cloud is great, but it's not built for everything, and it's not enabled for everything. And there's some systems where, while it might be able to be proved accessible, we might be able to prove the security, there's a lot, it much might be more effective to go on site and do it on site. So it's not for everything, but there's certainly a lot of things that are particularly forward web uh, applications where it is ideal. Um, and really that's where you make the most benefit out of it. Regards to data, uh, obviously there's various ways you can manage data uh, within just a normal test environment, whether you're using production data or, or uh, synthetic data. And with the cloud, we can manage that in different ways as well. We can store the test data again if they want on the cost client site. It can be held within their firewalls and we only access it as we need it within the within the cloud. Again, that can be done in a secure manner. Not everyone has access to the to the servers we set up in the cloud. Uh, with the the likes of Amazon Azure, they do have very secure methods for accessing the cloud servers. So not anyone can just access the servers that you're using. Um, for the likes of performance testing, we tend not to actually keep any data. So we can we take the data, we run the tests, and at the end of the tests, the servers we've used for the load generators are torn down, and they do, the data doesn't reside anywhere after that. So there's ways around looking at the data and where it's stored and how it's stored. And the cloud providers as well are very aware of this. There's obviously a lot of applications themselves are hosted in the cloud, and they're so and they're aware of the data concerns around it. So there's a lot of thought being put into the security of data. The other thing that cloud enables to do is the setup time. I said with the likes of the third-party software as a service, um, it's very quick, very easy to set up the tools you need. Performance test tools can be, we can set up a, a very large grid of load generators uh, located around the world at various data centers in a matter of probably less than 10 minutes. To do that manually um, using remote servers, that could take days to configure uh, typically. Uh, if you were to do that not using cloud services, that could take days to, ma to set up and manage. Um, and again, once you're finished with that, it's going to take days to tear it down uh, and restore the servers back to where they were, remove the so any software. But with the cloud, basically once you're finished with them, they're torn down, they don't exist anymore. And once you've finished your testing, you're not paying for them as well. So the setup time is much, much less using the cloud because you don't need to spend that time configuring and you don't need the people with the experience to install and configure the tools. But there are, there are challenges to using on-demand testing, technical and people. And really, most of them are around people and conventions. Um, internally, within our company, there still is a mentality of being on site. 
that uh, you need to be on site to do the job, you need to be on site to talk to people. We've, there has been teleworking for, or I'll call it teleworking for many, many years, uh, and a lot more people are remote, working remotely. And it's really, it's just a culture. There's no real reason why people can't work off-site. Um, in many ways, people can be as effective off, more effective off-site as on-site. Um, we need to manage the resources. Um, so on demand means that we don't know what's going to be coming up. Um, so our testers could be working on uh, a test execution for company X in the morning. They could be writing automation tests in the afternoon and the next day. The day after that, they could be uploading some code for uh, code analysis and sonar cube. And so the, the variety of we need to manage to make sure that people have the appropriate skills, that the people with the appropriate skills are available. Now, that sounds like we have a lot of people doing a lot of different things, but there's also specialists within that area, within dev operations, within performance, making sure that the quality of all these activities are being done. And that's, that's a challenge, is just making sure that infrastructure, that structure is there to make sure the quality uh, is maintained at the right level. The other thing is because it's a service and we don't provide the same person, um, if someone differently goes back, someone different goes back to a client to do the next testing cycle, they obviously have to know where the last person left off. So we need to make sure that our documentation and handoffs are very good and very clear process and procedure around that. The other side is the challenge on the client. Again, there's an on-site culture that people like to see people working. and They like to think that if they can see them, they can manage them better. If they can see them, they're more productive. Um, I'll disagree with some of those uh, statements because really oh, there's no need to, in most cases to be on site. Um, there are instances, uh, and we do go on site, uh, particularly where we can't access, or there's a lot of difficulty around accessing applications from remotely, in which case from an on-demand point we can go on site. That reduces the leverage of the cloud, and that reduces the ability to use the cloud uh, from that point of view, and ultimately will put the cost up. Um, one, of the, one of the challenges with clients is also getting access, opening up that access to the system under test from the cloud. As I spoke about earlier, there are secure ways of accessing systems from the cloud, setting up virtual private clouds. Uh, we, we, can rest, we, rest, we do restrict access to the virtual machines we create. Uh, there's whitelisting and there's various methods for making sure you've got a safe, secure channel between the cloud and the client site and the system under test. That covers the next point as well as security. Uh, and the final point is the belief in quality of the product, that when they can see someone doing uh, something, they, they believe that they're doing a good job. When they can't see you, uh, there isn't that we, um, conviction that you're doing the right quality of work. So we do a lot of work to, make, to show that the testing we're doing is of the highest quality, and the quality isn't compromised. Ultimately, as a company, we're we're a quality company, uh, and we need to make sure that the, the products we deliver are of the highest quality, whether it's from the cloud or on site. So what I'll do is just talk through um, typical cloud engagement. So I'll talk, I'll talk through um, the performance testing, because performance as I said, it's one of the most mature uh, performance tests vendors and performance testers have been one of the early adopters within the use of the cloud. Although say we're using it for all those other different areas on that map earlier. Um, and the process we go, it's, it's, it's nothing revolutionary and you're probably familiar to a lot of you. Uh, we have the initial customer engagement where we talk through how we deliver it, what dependencies we have on the customer, um, and we get the requirements. Again, this requirements comes back very much to the pay-per-use model and the cost models we use. 
Um, so for instance, with performance testing, we need to find out what's their maximum concurrent load, what's their load model about, um, how many business processes they need to model, the number of scenarios they need to model, the number of test cycles we need to model, uh, and that informs the cost model. And out of that cost model, we'll put forward a proposal that says uh, what testing we'll do, how much time we'll take in the setup, uh, creating the test scripts, and then how much per cycle. And that doesn't necessarily say which dates it's going to be going on and how much between each test cycle, because they don't pay between each test cycle. It's just the total effort and not a duration that's put in the proposal. Um, the likes of functional testing that's done uh, can be based on the number of test requirements, or sorry, test cases or test requirements. Um, so once your proposal is accepted, uh, we then need to access the application. Uh, we need to look at the tools we need to support it, do we need, um, and how it's managed. So we, that's probably the next step, is getting this access to the applications from our location, as well as uh, getting any internal um, users or on the client side access as well out to any management or dashboards we're using to report on the progress of testing because uh, we'll put a lot of that up in the cloud as well about um, how progress etc is going. We, we create the test collateral, that's usually one phase uh, where we'll sit down, we'll create all the test collateral and then We'll schedule and execute tests. Now that could be part of a regression uh, suite where we're running tests every six weeks for the next year. Uh, it could be we've got three scheduled, one a month for the next three months, uh, or it could be one a day for the next three days. Um, so it really depends on on what we're actually doing, what we're testing, or it may be just a one-off engagement. So we'll schedule that in uh, and we'll execute the test. But generally, how quickly we can turn it around depends on how long the engagement's going to be. Uh, as I say, it's, the on-demand isn't uh, two, bring us at 2 o'clock on Friday and we'll run at 3 o'clock on the Friday. Um, if we can, we will, but really we need a couple of days for uh, engagement before we can do a performance test. Uh, execution provided we've got all the collateral available. And the final cycle uh, is just reporting each test cycle, uh, get, making sure and closing the loop and getting the feedback on that, making sure that then the next steps are defined. Do we hold off? Do you, If you've got a test scheduled for next week, are you sure that you want to go ahead with that? Do you want to delay that? Or would you like to bring that forward a bit because there's been no issues? Do you want to run that in two days' time? So really, it's a very iterative um, cycle, a very interactive cycle as well with the uh, with the scheduling. So really, just a summarize of how cloud tools enable on-demand testing is that one, we can set up a lot faster, so we're not wasting time and money into setting up the infrastructure, acquiring licenses, installing the infrastructure with experienced. Um, engineers, you've got much lower infrastructure costs, you don't have any initial infrastructure cost, you just pay for the infrastructure as you use it. Then the tool providers uh, are providing much more uh, effective licensing models for on-demand testing or to pay per use. Um, you've got flexible resource allocation, uh, so you can you don't need to have a constant uh, level of testers. You can use a testing uh, as you need it and as, you, as it's required. If you don't need it, it's very easy to call that testing off. So it's a very cost-effective way to test. Uh, it's cost-effective from the people side and from the tooling side. So that's really what I uh, want to cover today around how we use the cloud uh, to enable on-demand testing. I'll now hand you back to Dara, and uh, certainly any questions would be very interested to hear on the, on the test huddle, and um, I'll be there to answer them all afternoon. 
That's great. Thanks very much for that, Gordon. And just want to reiterate what Gordon was saying there, that the Q&A session will be taking place over on Test Huddle now very shortly. I've just shared the link with you again. So if you look in the little chat drop-down box there, you'll see the link to Test Huddle. Or you can just Google testhuddle.com and just click on the slider. It'll bring you directly into the discussion. And before we head across to Test Huddle, I just want to make you aware of another webinar we have coming up. And this webinar will take place next week uh, with Anna Hoff, and she will be presenting the test lead of my dreams. And you can register for this webinar on Test Huddle as well by clicking on the Events tab, and you will see it listed there. Um, I want to thank Gordon again for doing today's webinar, and I'd like to thank all of you attendees for attending. The webinar is now over. Thank you, and take care.